Hey everybody, back again today. I want to talk a little bit about uh, load centers. I've been getting a lot of questions lately uh, through my uh, YouTube channel uh, via email and about uh, problems people are having in their homes with uh, receptacles not working, their uh, appliances blowing circuit boards, uh, lights blinking on and off, things like that. And in my as an electrician in my field work, I, most of my service calls are for, for things like that. Uh, and the first place I always start is right at the load center. You probably would recognize this. You have one of these in your basement, uh, whether fuses or circuit breakers. Um, simply open the door. You can see this is a fairly new load center. This is a Square D home line, 200 amp panel. Um, everything is nicely uh, listed on here. Uh, though one of the problems is, as things change over the years, so does the legend. But uh, it's not usual that the legend is ever updated. So chances are whatever circuit you're looking for, you're never going to find it anyway. So as an electrician, the first thing I would do if I was coming in, I would crack this box cover open if I was looking for a receptacle that wasn't working in your home, and I would check the breakers. Uh, one of the things about the circuit breakers is sometimes the circuit breaker handle will come over to a mid position. Sometimes the circuit breaker handle would flip all the way to off. Sometimes the circuit breaker handle doesn't move at all. So the first, usually when I'm talking to the homeowner when I get into the house, we go downstairs together because uh, they're going to show me where the panel box is. And the first thing I do is I touch every single breaker. And I, uh, just to just to feel the handles so you can see that these things are not moving. They're all on Sometimes the double ones one pole can trip and you press on it and it kind of moves like that um, These are all good. I, lo I Learned a long time ago to do every single one of them Because if you ever skip one you'll be going back downstairs again to try them again So I can see that all of these breakers are all in the on position so the next step is I'll take the panel box cover off. Let me just grab a screwdriver here. There's no wrong way to take a panel box cover off. Um, there is my way. And my way is to start at the bottom with the screws and work my way up. If you ever had a building or an office full of people and you take these screws out the wrong way, the cover will swing. And this center divider cover will hit the breakers on this bottom half of the panel, knock all these off, people are screaming, it's a whole big thing, you gotta find someone to blame, all that stuff. So um, I'm just gonna take these screws out quickly. And as I said, I always start at the bottom. And when I'm doing an external inspection quickly of the panel box, I'm also just looking quickly, and it has nothing to do with what I was called in for. I'm looking to make sure all the, uh, the uh, KO blanks are all in the panel box on the top and the bottom. Um, I'm looking to make sure that we're not missing any circuit breakers and there's an open hole that someone could put their fingers in. I always carry those things on my service van, so I'm not worried about it. Um, and if there is an arc flash or a fault inside the panel box, the box has to be completely sealed up to contain that blast or the sparks. So it's just something I do as an electrician. I want to leave people with the best possible job. So all the screws are out except for the top ones. I'm going to take out this screw here. I'm going to loosen it up. I'm going to put my hand right here and I'm going to take this out with my fingers. And then you could see that I'm still holding the box. Now, if I loosen this screw up, this panel cover will swing, knocking out a lot of the breakers. I'm going to continue to hold this, take this screw out. And now I'm able to get, pull the bottom of the panel box cover off, and then I'm going to lift it straight away. This is the inside of our panel box. And I just normally do a quick inspection for the homeowner. One of the things I can see that this is type URD cable. And there, there's a lot of energy inside these boxes. Um, there's arc flash hazard, electrocution hazard. This is a very serious, um, a very serious thing. So you really wanna be very careful and just respect what you're doing and take your time. Um, and again, with my inspection, the panel looks clean. 
I could see uh, this is an underground service because this is a type URD cable. It's a direct burial cable outside. I can see I can see that we have a bonding screw in place right here. And this bonding screw is very important because it ties all your neutrals and grounds together. Um, there is a grounding conductor up here, which is what I'm looking for also. This ground, you can see the uh, telephone and cable TV are attached to it. Anything with a ground has to be attached to the one common ground. That's why you have three prong receptacles and all your appliances and things, because it automatically connects right back to the, to the ground bar. So at this point, the neutral and the ground are all connected. This would be our neutral conductor. These are our phase conductors. This is the ground. At this point, everything, the box is all tied together. Um, I will then, you know, I want to check all these connections. I'm going to try to tighten all these, uh, all these screw terminals up for the customer. The other thing, if you have a loose uh, connection at the circuit breaker, that could be, that could be a big issue because um, the circuit breakers will trip on uh, overload, short circuit, and over temperature. So if you have a, a, a hot connection on the circuit breaker, it could trip just because it's hot. Um, the other thing to consider that I always look at is how tight these terminations are. I won't work on those without putting on my arc, arc flash gear. I have a full Nomex suit. I look, it looks like the uh, bomb squad has come to the house. So this I won't work on. I can see that the connections have uh, NOAA locks on them. That's that great termination since that's aluminum wire, it will corrode. You have to abrade that a little bit with a stainless steel brush and then you're, they uh, will put a Penetrox coating on there because the aluminum will build up an oxide coating. And this is just a deoxidant. It's a gray coating that, trust me, it gets all over everything. It'll be all over my face in a minute um, that your electrician would have put on for you. So these are all things I'm looking for. If that's not on there, that's something we want to do for the customer. Um, we want to make sure everything's tight. The ground is connected. This ground wire will go back to your, uh, your water piping system. It goes back to one side of your water meter. There will be a jumper to the other side. And um, if you have a well, you will have the same kind of thing uh, with a jumper over the pressure switch and all that, uh, those components. But in a house with a well, I, would, I normally install two eight-foot ground rods six feet apart. Really important, uh, the majority of the times I run into a problem is with a bad neutral connection. The neutral connection is, is this is the grounded conductor not the grounding conductor, the ground dead conductor. Super important to have a good connection with this because without this, the electricity won't flow. Um, whatever uh, energy is sent to your 120 volt receptacles, it's imbalanced, so you're not using everything. So the unused energy is coming, that current's coming back to the panel board. It'll eventually go back into the electrical grid again. Think of it as um, running water in your sink and uh, some of the water goes down the drain and back out to the nature again. So that's that's kind of how the neutral works. 99% of all electrical problems in a home are a loose connection. Um, that's either going to be a connection at the breaker, it's going to be a bad neutral connection, bad ground connection, or a connection up at a device. So one of the things I would do here, again, I, I won't work on these here without my arc flash gear on. Uh, we can go in and test some of these things. I can just take my screwdriver. I don't have my insulated tool set, so I'm going to insulate the screwdriver. Uh, pro tip, Scotch 33 plus tape. It's the only way to go. Don't buy that cheap. You're not going to use so much of it that you can't afford to roll this tape. Where's the end of it? There's the end. Pro tip number two with tape, stretch the tape. So when you, when you put tape on, you stretch it, you put some pressure on it and you stretch it as you go. And that's how you'll install the electrical tape. I'm just gonna put two layers on this. Stretching all the way. I guess pro tip number three, when you're done with your tape, just fold over the tag end so you don't have to go searching for that little end again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna go through the, uh, the circuit breakers first and you can see that I would, I have my, my screwdriver insulated. I have one hand in my pocket. 
Uh, you do not want to be doing something like this. Your hand slips down the screwdriver. So I always have one hand in my pocket, so I'm not grounded to anything. And I can try to tighten these down. All these connections are tight that I can see. And, and you can see, I can see where the screw terminal is. So I'm not going in like this and fumbling around. I already have my screwdriver oriented. So I'm going right into the slot on that breaker and I'm turning it. That one moved a little bit. These are all pretty tight. These are all very tight. The next thing I would go to is the neutrals and you can see the neutrals up here, neutrals and grounds. Um, and I'll just go right onto that with my screwdriver. Use the appropriate size screwdriver. Moved a tiny bit. All these connections technically are supposed to be torqued and there is a torque value that you can find out from the manufacturer. Uh, the circuit breakers are torqued. Everything is torqued in a panel box. I don't know anyone who uh, works in the electrical trade that does that, but I'm sure you, you could do it. Everything's nice and tight in here. Um, I will check this aluminum one back here. No, everything's nice and tight. Um, and you want to be insulated. You want to be careful because if you're over here and you slip out of the slot, this is the bus bar. So that's, that's live 120 volt. Um, to be on the safe side with the circuit breakers, I did this hot. Um, I would shut the main off and have a headlamp and I would go through and tighten all these connections with the power off. That, that's the best way to do it, the safest way to do it. And once I exhausted that avenue, that would be the end of what I would, any time I would spend it here and then I would move on up to um, into the house and look at the devices and things like that. Uh, one other thing I do is I will um, I will sniff your, give your pan a little sniff. Um, as I'm standing here, I can smell. I don't smell anything, and, and you shouldn't. If you smell uh, ozone, ozone is kind of like a, a burned plastic, uh, chlorine kind of smell, and it it it. It, it really stinks, but you can smell it. And if you smell ozone, something electrical has been burning in there. Now, I've had instances where everything looked great and, you know, I could pop a breaker out. On the other side of the breaker, you would see, you know, all this Bakelite material is all, would all be burned out. There's, uh, there's no jaws left or anything like that. You can actually you can't see it, you have to pull the breakers out. So if I smelled something had burned in there, I would definitely, uh, definitely check that out a little deeper, but I wouldn't spend any more time here. The, the, the troubleshooting technique I use is like a shotgun technique. I start at the beginning and then I go to the middle and it's a lot faster than going from here through every single receptacle in the house. So that's what I do. The other thing I would mention as you can see, these are all single pole and double pole breakers. This is also a split or a mini breaker uh, that will fit in this panel. Um, and the one thing to know about this breaker is you can see where the jaw is there. It already has some uh, NOAA locks in there. That's, that's a reject bar. So these manufacturers will not let you fill up this panel box with split breakers. So they won't take uh, you know, a 20 position panel and put 40 40 circuits in there. So you have to be careful when you're buying it. The bus bar is different halfway down the panel, so it'll reject it. The other thing is if you're adding circuit breakers, make sure you use the same manufacturer and same type. Uh, it should be printed on the door of the box or take a picture of the breaker. These are Square D home line type HOM, but this is an HOM and this is a, what the heck is this? This is a General Electric circuit breaker. But side by side, you can see how it will fit in the cover. That's the same size. Same, same size from the bottom to the top. Exactly the same. This will fit right in and the jaws will fit in. So with very little effort, I can squeeze this GE breaker into this Square D home line panel. But what you're going to find is that the jaws are different. Um, you probably can't see it, but like the, the square D jaw is a little farther apart. The GE one is a little closer together. Uh, it, if it was the reverse, it will be too loose on the bus bar. You're going to destroy the breaker. You're going to burn the bus bar and you're going to have to either replace the guts or the whole panel. 
So that's something you want to be really careful when replacing circuit breakers in a panel box. Um, so I think that would kind of conclude everything I would do in here. That's kind of the, uh, my troubleshooting method, and that's where I would start. And my next step would just be put this box cover back on again, and I think that will be that.